all right welcome back everybody in this video we're gonna look at a we're gonna look at a more interesting we're gonna look at a more inter interesting system and we're gonna explore the dynamics of a uh, we're gonna explore the dynamics of an adiabatic CSTR okay uh, just to give you guys a brief forward before we dive into the problem I'm just gonna make the statement that this entire vessel this entire setup is very badly designed okay now what could go wrong if you let me just explore the let me just uh, label we have the insulation here and uh, we have our as you can see we have the impeller that's gonna keep the system well mixed and we have the uh, control valve we have a valve that's gonna that we will use to control the exit flow rate okay okay um, now I shall explain why this vessel is badly designed okay the reaction is very exothermic we have a dimerization reaction with a negative heat of reaction with a negative heat of reaction okay the temperature at which this reaction is being carried out for kinetic reasons your enthalpy change is going to be negative now enthalpy changes are a function of temperature in a real life example enthalpy of a reaction is going to depend on the temperature in which you're carrying out the reaction for this problem for the simplicity sake we're saying that we're not uh, we're not dealing with large deviations in the temperature so far therefore we're gonna assume that this is relatively Delta H this term right here is relatively constant how good of an assumption that is you'll have you'll need more info on the process all right and here I have the uh, non-linear kinetics here I have the non-linear kinetics for this reaction and uh, since we have an adiabatic operation there our vessel is no longer going to operate isothermally so there's going to be temperature dependence there's going to be temperature dependence on the uh, of the reaction constant the rate constant and let's start off by collecting some brief process info that will help us and I'm just gonna keep everything symbolic because these are the things that you'll be looking for when you're actually solving a problem uh, now since it is a liquid phase reaction liquid phase setup we're gonna assume that we're gonna take the average density average density of both the inlet and the outlet and we shall keep it symbolically equal to rho kilogram per meter cube again how good of an assumption that is that depends on the kind of process you're dealing with if you're dealing with a polymerization reaction then that's not going to be a very good assumption but if you're dealing with um, a more generic liquid phase reaction where you're um, like one organic solvent to another then it's not that bad of an assumption okay what else um, we need our uh, heat capacities we're gonna use uh, average heat capacity average specific heat capacity because uh, our system is adiabatic and we will be needing an energy balance all right all right all right what else what else um the inlet conditions the upstream conditions the inlet flow rate is given as q q in meter cube per second nice and inlet temperature shall be given as t degrees celsius or okay that's fine that is fine and the inlet concentration will be c a n mole per dm cube mole per liter okay and uh, this is just the uh, this is just a summary of info that you might need to go into the field go in the field talk to operators talk to operators and do the best you can to get as accurate of this information as you can okay once you have the info 
I'm just going to give you a brief map of what we're going to do next. We have three species in the system. Um, yeah, we have A, B, and water, since it's a uh, water is being used as a solvent. So we can write a total of three mass balances. Okay. We'll be able to write a total of three mass balances, but for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna focus on the uh, I'm just gonna focus on the reactant and the total mass balance. So I'm gonna start off by the total mass balance because mass total mass has to be conserved. Total mass balance, and then I shall move on to I'll move on to the mole balance on A. Mole balance on the reactant okay and i leave the mole balance on b the product and the water on you guys as an exercise because that is just a mere simple extension and i'm gonna use all the auxiliary equations to make sure i have all the degrees of freedom sorted out and some of the auxiliary equations if you've been following so far we have the valve characteristic equation which is um, we've been using the most generic commercial valve equation. You might have a different equation when you're at work, but that's that's just part of life. What else? Um, simple geometry equations. We've been using um, the equation for the hydrostatic pressure, etc., etc. And um, to tie everything together, since it's an adiabatic operation, we're also going to need an energy balance. So that we can model the, uh, so that we can predict if uh, if we're gonna have a runaway, if we're gonna have a runaway reaction or no. Now, if you guys have taken a safety class or have a basic understanding of a how a chemical engineering, how a chemical plant works, runaway reaction is no bueno. It's probably like the worst condition, probably like the worst thing that could ever happen in a chemical plant. Arguably the worst. So this is just a map of what we're going to do next and I shall stay tuned and we'll develop the dynamic equations in the next part of this video. Alright, thank you for watching.